1997. Um, what did you find when you came here, first of all, you think? Uh, there was no gym. Um, I think perhaps there'd always perhaps been a slight feeling that the culture um, at Somerset hadn't been as high as it should have been, if you like, regarding, you know, attitudes towards fitness. Um, yeah, so, uh, you know, the first thing I tried to instill in my time as, as coach here was that, you know, an attitude to your, to your fitness. And remember the old indoor school that wasn't being used um, in this, uh, where we've got this new stand now. Yeah. But I turned that into a, into a boxing circuit. Um, I th you know, I think attitude to, to fitness um, is, is a really important, you know, a really important factor in the game. It keeps... It keeps bowlers able to, you know, on a hard day after tea, it still allows them to be able to, you know, to run in and bowl, bowl quick, for batsmen to, to keep going on and make big hundreds instead of getting out between 50 and 100. A lot of these things can come down to, to attitudes to, uh, to, to fitness. Um, so I think that's something I was very big on when I arrived as, as director of cricket. Because you'd come from a very successful playing career with Warwickshire, hadn't you? I mean, under your sort of umbrella up there, they've done been very successful side. Yeah, and I think a, you know, a very fit side as well. Yeah. You know, the amount of work we did with you know running shuttles and understanding, you know, cricket's an anaerobic sport; it's not aerobic, and and how to train and, and bringing that sort of sports science, if you like, and nutrition um, that was coming into the game in those in those days. I think at Warwickshire we were perhaps a little bit a, a little bit of ahead of uh, of some counties with that. Um, and uh, you know, it's it's it was an area in the game that I think was a bit bit underdone in in county cricket. Um, you know, I think there's a few non-negotiables that you should have as a as a club. You know, and you know, one of them is that culture that realizing that your energy when you when you open that dressing room door and you walk into that dressing room, you know, your energy affects everyone else in the in the team. You put a smile on your face, if <clears throat> you show you're happy to be there. You say good morning to everybody, and you give off a a happy, positive energy. Um, you know that rubs off on that rubs off on people, and 100%. Um, <coughs> excuse me, 100% encouragement between players. I think it's you know, really important. Um, if a player makes a mistake on the field, that's the important time to you know for the other players to show that that player that the love and the support that he is a teammate. You care about him, so you know no one means to drop a catch. It's an awful thing that happens on a cricket field to somebody. But you've got to want players wanting the ball. And the only way you're going to want the ball in the field is if you're getting encouraged all the time. So that when you make a mistake, you know it's not the end of the world. You've got ten other blokes out there. You know they've got your back. They know that they're saying, never mind, buddy, catch the next one. <clears throat> and if you play with that culture, then you know, you're going to always want the ball in the field. And I've, I've definitely played in, <clears throat> in teams and I've seen matches where you know, the ball goes up in the air um, and instead of two players fighting over it, you know, you've got two, two players thinking, I don't want that responsibility, I don't want to make a mistake, and they leave it for the, the other fielder. And it might bounce in between the two of them. Um, and, you know, a lot of those mistakes come from, <clears throat> from the, the culture and the, and the environment. And it's so important that you've got a supportive, encouraging culture at a club. But when, you, when Peter Anderson appointed you, did he appoint you on the, on the basis that you were going to bring this to the club? Yeah, he, Peter basically said, you know, do what you did at Warwickshire, what, what worked at Warwickshire and, and you know, I captained a, uh, a club that had a successful few years um, and yeah, I, I believe that when you get that chance to captain a side, um, and myself and, and Bob Woolmer as the, as the coach, you know, we, we did make some changes, we stopped any, any seniority within a club and, and people being capped and uncapped. And you know, when I first came to Warwickshire, you know, the, the younger players had to knock on the changing room door, and, and you know, there was definitely a feeling of of senior and junior. Um, and I like to think at my time at Warwickshire, you know, the likes of Ashley Giles and Dougie Brown and Wazen Khan and these guys, when they came in as young players, when they came into the the first team, they felt equal. Um, and you know, that's something I was I was very keen to do when I came came here to Somerset. You know, I remember. A, you know, a little story of, of Peter Bowler, who was, you know, I got on really well with, with Peter. Um, 
but there were times Peter could be, as they say, as an opening batsman. He might be in his own world, um, but also he had a bit of a, a bad back issue. You know, I remember Peter coming into the, the change room one day, and and he just came in, and he was in his own world, and he just came along and you know, sat down and did his thing, getting ready. And <clears throat> I remember Graham Rose coming up to me, going, "Have I done something wrong?" And I said, well, "What's up, Graham?" He said, the, "The captain didn't say good morning to me. He didn't say hello." And you know, that's how. That's how sensitive some players can be about, you know, how a captain or how, how teammates react towards them. So making sure that there's always that, you know, you're not taking the mickey out of other on, each other on cricketing issues and that you're always supporting and encouraging each other 100%. To me, that's behaving like a leader. And if you can have, if you can have players, if you can teach players to think like winners and behave like leaders, then, you know, hopefully winning and losing will, will take care of itself. I suppose we all couldn't be mentioning Andrew Caddick, hadn't we? Uh, so he'd be upset if we didn't talk about him. <laughs> <laughs> um, Caddy, Caddy was very easy to manage. You know, Caddy just, I, I just thought if we should, we should be able, we should, you know, get Caddy to donate his blood, whatever he's got in, in his blood and put it into the other bowlers. Cause you know, you'd turn up, you know, Caddy had bowled 25 overs and the next day he'd walk in and you know, that, Bowled a couple of looseners, you know, before the match started. But he he was he just had a, a, a wonderful, whatever body chemistry that that he, he didn't seem to to get injured. He didn't seem to to you know have stiffness and, and soreness. Um, you know, he was a fantastic a fantastic performer for the club. And, and what does it make you feel now now to come back here? I know your mum lived locally. Obviously, she's no longer with us, but you've still got contact there to come back and, and see the club the way it is now. And what does it make you feel to think that you've been a part of the fabric and the history of Somerset? Um, it, it slightly feels like an old, like a long time ago, you know, getting older as a, as a professional, you know, coach, having been a player and then, and then coaching, it's, uh, you know, getting older isn't an easy, it's not an easy thing to, uh, to, to really cope with, if you like, as much in in life. Um, I'm still involved in the game. I'm coaching out at, coaching out in Australia, and the, the club I coach in Perth just won the, the first grade premiership. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So which club a, is that? Subiaco Floriot. Right. We had Lewis Gregory came and played yeah. for us. Yeah. Yeah. Not last year, the year before, but yeah. he was unable to bowl. Um, but yeah, the club uh, the club won the first grade premiership. So I'll be getting back there for the. For July, we'll start pre-season, beginning of August. Um, you know, I've got four teams to manage and, or coach. You know, we've got you know 50 odd players that you, you have to look after on a you know Tuesday and a Thursday night. And, um, but you know, for me, a lot of it is about it's just about the culture and the environment, making sure that people turn up. You know, with that smile on their face <clears throat> every time you have a cricket trigger. You know, every time, and a lot of people don't understand the importance of what I call mental skills ability. You know, that what do you think about when you, you have a cricket trigger? You know, you're, you're driving your car, you see a cricket ground, and you think, oh, cricket. And, you know, what are you thinking about at that point? Is it, are you thinking something positive about your game? Or are you getting a bit nervous about the weekend? Are you thinking, oh, you know, I'm facing so and so this weekend, and he got me out last year? Um, and the, Learning the ability to, to take ownership at those at those moments, and think about you know play a little movie of yourself, um, having success, playing some fantastic shots, getting wickets, you know, control you know you the, the whole time we are programming our subconscious with what we think about ourselves as a player, you know, and thinking the right way and thinking of yourself as a as a fantastic player and a successful player. You know, I think Muhammad Ali used to, you know, in public, he'd start a press conference by going, I am the greatest. I am the greatest. And he was programming his subconscious all the time. I'm the greatest. I'm the greatest. And when he got in a ring, his subconscious takes over. And it probably had this amazing belief that he was the greatest. Story. Two guys that I coached in the, or I was involved with in the IPL. <clears throat> For example, Yuvraj Singh and Jesse Ryder. They probably hit the least amount of balls in practice, but on match day, they were the, the two that stood out for having the, the most self-belief. You know, Jesse Ryder would go, right, Dale Stane, I'm gonna go out there and I mean, it's great, it looks a good wicket, I'm gonna go out there and smash him. And he'd actually say it to you 
And as he said it, without him probably knowing, he was playing a little movie of Jesse Ryder smacking Dale Stane. But there were, there were other guys who practiced and practiced and practiced, but on that match day when it came along, they didn't necessarily want to go in and, and face the music. They weren't in the right place mentally, so. Brilliant, Dermot. Brilliant to have you back at Taunton. Thanks, Thank Richard. you very much indeed. Nice to Thank meet you. you. Thank you.